Perfect. Thank you so much uh, for First Park Homes. Uh, I couldn't really distinguish uh, the difference between Robbie Domingo and uh, Sir Jovi Tupas, no? Walang magkakaiba eh sa itsura eh. And we just started actually, no, Attorney Angel. Thank you so much. And uh, this is a very, very, uh, uh, the, the crescendo of this uh, International Housing Fiesta started by, of course, uh, from the Department of Human Settlements. Mga big time talaga ang mga kasama natin sa uh, industriya. So, without further ado, to introduce our uh, guest of honor, mas bigatin mga kaibigan, ang uh, kakambal ni Robby Domingo. Si, welcome back our dashing debonair, Sir Jovi, to introduce our guest of honor. Thank you very much. Our guest of honor and speaker for today is a seasoned public servant whose unblemished career in public administration is truly admirable. He has devoted his life to excellence in local governance as shown by his stint as local chief executive of Tagaytay City. He also served as president of the League of Cities of the Philippines from 2001 to 2004 and was likewise chairman of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, MMDA, from 2010 to 2015. His tenure at the MMDA, more than having showcases in-depth knowledge and skill in urban management, sparked his advocacy for disaster preparedness and resiliency and deepened his passion to serve the people even amidst the dangers of disasters and calamities. Our guest of honor is an esteemed international lawyer. He completed his Master of Laws degree from the University of London, specializing in public international law. He pursued his Doctor of Judicial Science Studies in Tulane University Law School in New Orleans, Louisiana, USA. He passed both the Philippine Bar and the New York State Bar exams. He is likewise a Brigadier General in the Philippine Army Reserve Forces. He was elected as Senator of the Philippines last May 2019. He was also a former political advisor to President Rodrigo Roa Duterte and became his main troubleshooter in, during crisis, disasters, and emergency. He is currently the chairman of the Senate Committee on Local Government and the Senate Committee on Urban Planning, Housing, and Resettlement, in addition to his membership in several other Senate committees. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my rarest privilege to present to you none other than Senator Francis Tol and Tolentino. Good morning, Senator. Morning. Good morning. Good morning to all. Good morning to our resource persons. Perhaps I can greet some. Uh, I'd like to greet uh, Ms. Imelda Magtoto, your national president. Um, Mr. Benigno Cabrieto, Jr., chairman of the board. Mr. Uh, Ricky, C Ricky M. Celis, board vice chairman. Uh, the previous speaker, attorney Aguila. Um, Mr. Ah, Secretary de Rosario, this around. Mr. Red Rosales, um, Ms. Marisa Del Mar, and all other uh, personalities present. Uh, perhaps I would not be able to acknowledge all of you, but I see some familiar faces uh, across the screen. Magandamaga po sa inyo lahat. Thank you for inviting me today in your uh, National Real Estate Association convention. I mean, I'm in my office right now, the Senate. Uh, I'm here. I, I have not yet been absent uh, since the start of the pandemic. I have been attending all sessions physically. Uh, this is my first uh, appearance virtually. So I would have wanted to see you all in person, but perhaps uh, some other time. So thank you for inviting me and I, I acknowledge the goodwill of the uh, National Real Estate Association for this opportunity to join you, though virtually, in your uh, International Housing Fiesta Filipinas and the 25th Enreya Dishud Online Housing Trade Exhibit. This is really what we need right now. This is really a, a sort of a booster of vaccine, not just for the housing sector, but for the business sector as well. I've been telling some cabinet members that it's about time that we go beyond uh, what is being done, beyond the lockdowns, beyond the 
the alert levels uh, beyond uh, what we've been doing for the last one year and eight months. So I think this is a, uh, the first hurrah, uh, so to speak, to resuscitate an, an ailing economy. So congratulations to the organizers. I think uh, you're the first, although they're planning something, but uh, I think the housing uh, sector uh, is the first. So congratulations to Enrea for doing this. Let me, let me discuss a, a prepared uh, statement here. Uh, though virtually, and this is more of uh, general broad strokes, strokes that uh, you're familiar with. Uh, yesterday, I had a briefing uh, done by Secretary Del Rosario concerning the Marawi housing uh, rehabilitation, and a big chunk of that briefing involves uh, involved the housing sector, especially for the internally displaced persons. So, a lot of things should happen, and I would want your group to focus right now on what the local government units can do and should do uh, by virtue of that Mandana's ruling. Be aware that a big chunk of the housing uh, job that's supposed to be done by NHA and they should, uh, though in its infancy, infancy stage, will be done and carried by the LGU. So we have to capacitate the local government units. Big chunk of resources would be given to them uh, starting starting 2022. And right now we're doing the uh, budget uh, process. As, as I speak, there is a budget hearing going on uh, three floors below me. So I'll be joining that later. So I, I, again, uh, there is no question. Shelter is an essential human, uh, it's essential to human survival as food and water. There, there is a need to establish decent housing for, for all. Uh, it, it is imperative, it's an imperative which the government should do and ought to fulfill. The, the, the private sector should likewise do the same. So in, in, in fulfillment of this critical goal, the Department of Human Settlements and Urban De Development would play an indispensable role, though I must admit that resources uh, wise, they're still lacking. It's, a, it's really a, a pity that uh, though we could have uh, given them a big chunk of resources, the, the allocation right now uh, would prevent us from doing so. I have to admit that at, at the outset because the, the pandemic reality is uh, really uh, preventing uh, government and even Congress from uh, doing what we should have done, we could have done, but you've been reading reports that the government right now has incurred more than 100 billion, uh, and that's dollars uh, in terms of foreign loans just to finance our pandemic response. So this is a big challenge uh, for, for our country. Uh, the challenges that we confront in relation to housing in the Philippines remain huge, uh, aggravated, as I've said, by the COVID-19 pandemic. But the establishment of the, the should uh, gives us a ray of hope. But during its infancy stage, I must admit, it swings were clipped uh, because of the lack of financial uh, base as well as the devolution of some functions given to the LGUs. Government efforts to address homelessness in the Philippines, I believe, have not ceased, nor should have, nor should be shelled. If you take a look at the latest census, how many Filipinos are there? Uh, how many Filipinos would be having their own families in the years ahead? So shelter, again, as I've said, like food and water is very essential to human health and survival. It is not only a need, but it is importantly a right. As very plainly said uh, in, in, in the vision statement of the housing industry roadmap, and I quote, every Filipino has the right to live with dignity in the comfort of one's home, regardless of economic status. But sad to say, approximately 4.5 million Filipinos, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, remain homeless. Three million of which are in Metro Manila. I've seen this. I, I used to be Metro Manila Council Chairman for several years. 
I've been to all the slums and uh, uh, homes near our Esteros and Pasig River and Marikina River, San Juan River. I've, I've, I've been in charge of dredging and cleaning all this waterway. So I've seen all of this. And with the issues on population growth, our country, by the way, having one of the highest birth rates in Southeast Asia, coupled with migration issues due to urbanization, displacement due to natural calamities and disasters, there is a need to provide settlements and it will overtake the efforts to provide homes for the Filipinos. I have yet to see a study or encounter a study that would validate my hunch that post-pandemic period would increase migration to Metro Manila and other urban centers. That's why in my other committee, we're, we're, we're staying focused on uh, uh, making more of our cities uh, resilient and uh, sustainable. Y yesterday, last night, uh, we passed the amended charter on second reading, amended charter of the city of Baguio uh, for, the, for the first time uh, since 1902 or 1906. And it's for me, uh, should be the template for all city charters because it encapsulates all the dreams coming from the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, including uh, making a city not just resilient, but a smart city, making a city uh, a center of e-governance, e as well as making a city livable in terms of its uh, inclusivity and uh, utilization of resources. And Baguio City is a, is, is, is a model because it includes even cultural communities and the creative groups. So recognizing the limited capacity of government to single-handedly address the problem of uh, adequate human settlements, we really acknowledge the goodwill of advocates like you, the national, uh, the N NREA, uh, contributing time, talent, and energy to assist in the resolution of Philippine housing issues. The Philippine housing industry roadmap 2012-2030, you're familiar with this, projects a housing need of 12.5 million by the year 2030. Malapit na po yun. Current housing backlog is, at, is estimated at 5.5 million units, and this figure is expected to rise to 6.5 by 2030. At the rate of only 200 to 300 housing units to be constructed annually for the next nine years, we are indeed doomed to face indomitable poverty housing challenges at the end of the housing roadmap. So, kailangan talagang magtulong-tulong. Apart from the global health crisis that we confront, we are likewise faced with a national housing crisis, an emergency that has grown out of proportions. Sinasabi ko nga before, how can you enforce a lockdown a meaningful lockdown with uh, homeless Filipinos, especially in Metro Manila. How can you enforce a lockdown with the appropriate social distancing requirements in a, in a one-bedroom uh, house uh, occupied by 12 persons, uh, including children? That's why it's really imperative that we revisit all our pa policies with your help and for the government and other stakeholders to act in unison and complement each other's efforts if sustainability and inclusive growth remain our shared goals. We recognize our current housing issues entail not just uh, shelters for the homeless, but also engaging the private business, the academe, the civic organizations and foundations and the like in our advocacy for a decent and comfortable, healthy dwelling places for Filipinos. Towards this end, I think, again, I reiterate, there is a need for you, there is a need for the national government, there is a need for the should to really engage the LGUs. I have been saying this over and over again, that the resuscitation, revival of the national economy will be triggered, will be... Uh, will be led by our local government units. It's not the national government. It's, it's, your, it's your Cebu City-led initiative, Davao City, Karkar City, Naga City, uh, Togegarao City, and the rest of the nation. So I suggest that you likewise engage 
our LGUs. The need of Filipinos uh, to, to stay at home, as I've said before, during this lockdown, to safeguard their health and, and ensure their safety is urgent and pressing. I, I have mentioned before, and this was last March, that we, it's now time that we go on face-to-face -face classes. I'm, I'm glad that this is being done, though on a limited basis, 120 schools. I hope this would grow. I have, I have stated three weeks ago, that it's about time that we abolish the IATF. It's about time that we, that we encourage uh, the LGUs to lead these efforts. Sabi nila, baka walang synchronization. Department of Health should be there. The LG should be there, but let the, let the local government units decide for themselves on how they enforce their own lockdowns, their own health protocols, following national guidelines. So I think uh, that, should be, that should be the model. And I, and I hope it will be uh, happening soon, uh, perhaps by February, uh, even in the midst of our heated uh, electoral exercise. The strategies identified to eliminate the projected housing backlog by 2030 in the Philippine housing industry roadmap, such as increasing housing production, enhancing, enhancing housing affordability to the development of housing subsidy program, increasing people's access to financing, improving regulatory environment for housing should be complemented, not just but by what we are do doing here as legislators that will closely identify the gaps in our housing programs. By the way, uh, we're almost on the second phase of the legislative uh, uh, track in so far as the rental housing subsidy law is concerned. I, I hope that that will be passed before we, we adjourn, the, the 18th Congress adjourn. As chairman of the housing, uh, as chairman of the Senate Committee on Housing and Urban Planning, it is incumbent on my part uh, to take the lead in policy formulation. But again, I must admit that we're constrained by COVID-19 uh, restrictions, what we can do right now is to plan ahead. Uh, plan ahead uh, for a post-COVID-19 pandemic scenario. Two years po yung nawala sa atin, halos two years na. And it's very hard to recover uh, the lost uh, days, months, and years. So I encourage you, uh, the N N N National Real Estate Association, Association to, to likewise lead in this uh, forward-looking, not just a brainstorming, but a real-life planning session. So uh, al allow me again to uh, mention some of the initiatives that we've been doing, even though we're, most of us are on a lockdown. We've initiated the Taal Volcano Resettlement and Rehabilitation Program. I was, I was there during the first eruption. I was there during the uh, supposed to be level three incident a couple of months ago in, in, in Laurel and Lemery, Batangas. So the Taal Volcano Resettlement Rehabilita Rehabilitation Program is ongoing. Uh, the same is true for, for uh, Mayon Volcano. Uh, there are initiatives being done by, by, by the National Housing Authority. I hope the housing, National Housing Authority, and we'll ensure this, would still be, would should, would still be a, a viable uh, agency, even with the Mandanas ruling, uh, create, uh, making the LGUs at the forefront. Again, I, I reiterate, legislation will be essential to address current and emerging issues on planning and development of settlements and communities. Existing policies, programs, and strategies such as those related to government initiatives for housing uh, should be revisited and, and consequently amended in order to adapt to rapidly changing national housing landscapes. I am sure that in the days ahead, we'll be uh, looking at township models. Uh, for the first time, we've realized that uh, Metro Manila or NCR is not, is not just the NCR as we, as we experience it for the first time, thanks to IATF. Dito ako nagpapasalamat sa kanila. They've created the, the term NCR Plus, NCR Plus bubble. So people are now 
uh, realizing that uh, we're, we're, we're all interconnected. Metro Manila, you have Bacoor, you have portions of Bulacan, you have portions of uh, Laguna, uh, and even Rizal. So eventually, this will creep in, that, that notion of NCR Plus would creep in not just to other government uh, services, social welfare, but even to the private sector. And I think the housing sector would be uh, affect, positively affected. So legislation, as I've said, uh, for the enhancement of LGU access to financial uh, schemes from the national government should, should remain a priority, even with the Mandana's ruling, empowering LGUs uh, should be a continuing uh, mode of training and capacitating them. I, I, I look forward to even a, a post-COVID scenario uh, for this. I, I made the proposal, but uh, it appears nobody listened. I made a proposal to Comelec that, that we, should even, uh, we should even make the requirement of uh, having all candidates, especially for uh, urban areas, attached in their certificates, uh, uh, in the cert certificate candidacy, uh, their plans for, for, for the city, including the housing sector. I even proposed to the DLG that we train the candidates uh, so that when, when election time is over and they're elected, they hit the ground running. Uh, they will have a two-day seminar uh, on housing, on disaster management, and, and other uh, functions of uh, local governance. But it seems uh, nobody listened because uh, these are ideas that probably are not innate in, in the functions of the DILG or even uh, the COMELEC. Lastly, recognizing the impacts of natural disasters and calamities and people's vulnerability to the loss of life or property, including shelter during these times is, is, is the key to building resilience to these uh, misfor misfortunes. I had the great opportunity and I will always consider that as part of my curriculum vitae or resume that I was the one who formulated the Oplan Metro Yakal for Metro Manila. Uh, I was the one who conceptualized that four quadrants for Metro Manila when a 7.2 earthquake would strike us. Uh, modesty aside, that is still being utilized by MDREMC and every Metro Manila uh, LGU. So I, I think that's my one of my greatest contributions because if anything happens to Metro Manila, that's uh, more than half of the Philippines uh, in terms of the GDP, uh, in terms of our uh, economy. Again, in closing, uh, let me reiterate my unwavering support to the National Real Estate Association as it uh, continues to uh, be a major driving force in the efforts to provide every Filipino with a roof above his head and a comfortable abode for his family. May you remain as instruments of hope for a country uh, in this time of great depression, if it is depression and depression in terms of economy and depression uh, psychologically and mentally and seeming hopelessness. Uh, rest assured that, that I'm here with you in working for the fulfillment of every Filipino's dream, a decent, livable and happy home where family bonds are strengthened, values are nurtured, and the future of young Filipinos are sealed. Together, let, let us build uh, not just the infrastructure. Together, let us build happy, healthy homes and communities. Again, thank you very much for this uh, privilege to be your guest. Uh, magandang umaga po muli. Pasensya na po, hindi ko nabati lahat yung mga uh, maliliit kasi yung mga pangalan nas dito sa Zoom. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me at magandang umaga po muli. Pagpalain po tayo at ingatan po tayo lahat ng poong may kapal. Maraming salamat po at magandang umaga. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.